Right, well, here I'm at North Kilworth. The parents have uh, been whisked away, so I'm now, it's finally all down to me, single handing. It's a rather blustery day. So, not raining at least at the moment, but wind is not making steering easy. My first single-handed tunnel coming up, Crick, just about a mile long, but uh, happily night and straight because I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. Steering is not so easy, I have to say. <laughs> you get quite disorientated. Well, I'm uh, very glad that I uh, didn't meet anybody coming the other way, which is one advantage about uh, cruising in the middle of November. And a very little tricky bridge right as you come out of the tunnel, especially if you're trying to, trying to talk to a video camera, which serves me right. So I'm here at uh, Watford Locks, which is the opposite of the Fox and Locks, apart from the fact it's right next to the, uh, <laughs> right, that's the M1 there. So uh, a bit, uh, not quite as tranquil and rural. Anyway, let's see. So it's <laughs> nice and quiet, just seen to the lock keeper. But uh, unlike uh, Foxton, I don't have my parents uh, helping with the gates and the paddles. So let's see what happens. Well, that's me, uh, that's me through. Was Apart from said, the bit of a dog's breakfast at the start where I, uh, the wind was causing me to go all over the place. But uh, that was very pleasant. The two lockies were very nice chaps. However, next time there will be a single lock and no lock keeper, so it will be me or my own. Well, that's me coming to the end of the Leicester line. On to the main Grand Union. Well, just after the junction, my first set of locks that I will be doing single-handedly is here. A little anxious, I have to say, but uh, and they're uh, they're broad locks, so it's uh, a bit more space, but it means the boat will bob around a bit more. Anyway, just have to take my time. I would like to drag it out rather than having to climb the ladder, but unfortunately that road bridge right next to the lock means I can't. Well, managed okay. <laughs> Took me about half an hour, but I wasn't going to rush it. And uh, I have to say, climbing on top of that roof, I uh, suddenly felt that the uh, vast extra cost in those narrow so solar cells was worth every single penny so I was tottering along in the lock. Number four of seven. Forgot my windlass at the last lock. Luckily, it's uh, what about two minutes walk, so that's one good thing with having flights of locks. Well, I was very glad to see the uh, sign saying bottom, bottom lock there. Whew. So I haven't taken a video from the locks because, you know, I wanted to be concentrating on working the locks and not having things going wrong rather than me gurning from the camera. <laughs> well, as you can see, it's a uh, lovely sunny day and the fact that it's middle of November and it's the weekday means that I seem to have the canal to myself, which is rather nice. Anyway, uh, I've also, it's quite a long trip today. I'm trying to try and make it all the way to uh, Stoke Bruin. Uh, and because of that, I've re I realised a couple of days ago that uh, I can have the generator on as I'm going, which basically means, yeah, I'm not, which it doesn't make any difference, you know, have it on while I'm cruising or have it on while I'm, uh, while I'm moored up. Uh, just, you know, means when I'm sitting there at night, it's uh, not gone clean away. I mean, at the moment, it's, it's not putting that much into the batteries, to be honest. I'm just using slightly less power than, uh, than it's generating, but still, over the course of the day, it should, uh, should charge them up to a certain degree. Well, I have to say, I've made a uh, better progress <laughs> than uh, I expected. So I'm here 
just before lunchtime, and I was going to moor up and have lunch. So here, huh. <laughs> I know where I am, you don't. Uh, I'm just at the northern end of Blissworth uh, Tunnel, which is the third longest in the country, and I have to confess that I'm not looking hugely uh, forward to doing it, just because, you know, it takes a long time, and I don't think my luck's going to hold out that... Uh, as I have done with uh, Husbands Bosworth and Crick, that not meeting anybody, but hey, I'll just have to cross past that road when, when it comes to it, as it were. So, yeah, lights are on. Remember to put this on this time. So, I'll get this through, and then I can uh, well, I expect to take about an hour, and then I can relax on the other side and have some lunch. Right, see you on the side. Just see the edge of the tunnel, having a tiny speck in the distance. Well, it's Friday and I should go and buy a lottery ticket because I can't believe my luck that I managed to uh, get through there without meeting another boat. Anyway, I'm very glad that I did. Uh, yeah, still a little bit, I, in the middle of the tunnel I started, not panicking, but starting to be anxious about, oh, you know, this, I've only been you know, using the boat for a week, what, something goes wrong, because I'm having to use a not, quite a lot of power to get through, about five kilowatts, which uh, basically means you know, that's the entire output of the generator plus some of the battery, and uh, it's like, oh, so, yeah, if something goes wrong, I'm uh, pretty stuck. Anyway, it didn't, I'm very glad to say, so... Uh, <laughs> That will be a, uh, well, I won't be having to do that again for a few months, thanks to the stoppages anyway. So, get around from here and uh, definitely time for some lunch. I believe that there is, uh, is it Bobby Cummins? The, uh, quite famous YouTuber and, uh, and uh, no, TV personality, which you can see he's doing his, doing his stuff as he goes along. I only recognise him because uh, the, well, he looks vaguely familiar and the uh, boat Naughty Lass is uh, familiar. He was uh, just outside the tunnels I came out, uh, so presumably, and I could smell diesel fumes, I was going all the way through, so presumably I was uh, following in the uh, footsteps, to mix the metaphor, of, uh, of somebody famous. I reckon those two uh, production people are two people are his production crew because uh, they've got drone and they were just on the phone to somebody saying about uh, more you know, where's available and one's a disabled thing. Uh, so, so Mr. Uh, Mr. Cummins isn't quite as uh, single-handed as uh, you might like to make out. There's Mr. Cummins again, and there uh, there's his drone operated by his people. So, here I am at Stoke Bruin, the, uh, one of the most probably recognisable and famous uh, canal villages on the, uh, in the country. And, uh, sorry, I'm just, <laughs> there's Mr Cummins again. Seems like must be redoing, he just, he's just gone to the lock and I was reversing out, I guess I'm gonna have to redo that again. Uh, anyway, so I think I'm going to treat myself and uh, stay here for two nights. Which is all you're allowed anyway. I mean at some point I've got to get on with the bloody trim, which I haven't touched yet. They've just closed the other lock gate, I'm guessing that they wanted him just squeezing in through a single gate in the uh, broad lock.
say better done than I would have managed. So as well as a decent pub, the Boat Inn, another of the attractions here is a couple of uh, historic commercial vessels that used to actually, when British Waterways was a, was a, com uh, was a commercial enterprise rather than a, uh, a leisure one. You know, and I'm not, I'm not because I generally struggle to remember what I used to eat for lunch before I developed my toasty habits. I really can't think. Morning. Well, alas, I'm back in the boiler suit, uh, <laughs> which is the last thing I want to be wearing on a Saturday morning. But uh, I have to push myself on to do the things that have to be finished, otherwise the boat will never be finished. And the first thing that I should be doing I need to get the trim around the side hatches done and uh, not just aesthetics but at the moment because I was waiting for the trim these don't actually lock at the moment and while it was absolutely fine in uh, someone like Debdale uh, pretty soon I'll be getting to uh, a bit more uh, civilization as it were and uh, I don't want to be leaving the boat uh, basically or literally unlocked so uh, yeah <laughs> So, a slight change of plan in that I realised that uh, for the side trim I'm going to have to do a bit of soaring and while it's not major I don't want to do it in the boat. However, here at Stoke Bruin it's very it's narrow but very busy towpath so it's not the place for me to be uh, setting up my workbench to do a bit of outside soaring. So instead I put some bolts on the uh, stern hatch which is arguably actually was even more important than the side hatches because this is probably the after the front door is probably the uh, next place that somebody would try to get in. Anyway, they uh, slide into the sides and uh, should stop this, well, <laughs> unless you go with a absolutely sledgehammer, will stop them sliding the hatch open. So that's one less thing to do. And on that basis, and given that the forecast is a lot, well, the weather is actually a lot better than the forecast, it was meant to be raining all afternoon, and as you can see, it's not. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, I've just left my uh, very nice mooring spot there, and I'm going to go through the seven Stoke Bruen locks, and hopefully it's a bit quieter down on that section of the Pope Path, because it's past the other car park and all that things. And it also gets the locks out of the way, which again, you know, <laughs> I've barely done any, but I've already, <laughs> the novelty is well and truly worn off so uh so yeah so i made an absolute dog's breakfast of the first one because I didn't realise coming around the bend that it's actually quite breezy so I got, uh, as I was slowing down you sort of lose steering and I got blown all over the place. Of course Stoke Brewing, that's where everybody you know, comes for lunch and watches you so I uh, said I made alright for all of myself but hey, they're all these strangers. And anyway, a second lock, uh, nobody around so I can collect my own devices. A bit more successful.
Ah. Ah, well, that's uh, good to get over. And right at the bottom, there's a sanitary station. So not only was I able to uh, unload some rubbish, I was able to top up some water. And given that the canal is so quiet and there's nobody waiting, I also had a cheeky shower given the generator's been on. And because I was on the water point, I was, I was I know, none of this turning down. I had a roaring hot shower, which was, which was absolutely <laughs> gorgeous. Uh, I feel a sight better for that. Anyway, uh, just like just like when my grandparents just got cr cricket on the TV, uh, it looks a lot lighter on the video than it actually is. So I need to go and I need to find a, uh, a reasonable place to moor in the next uh, 30 minutes, I would say. Anyway, two and a half hours, so uh, 30 minutes uh, broadlock, which on my own is, well, it is what it is, I think. I think some experts would uh, be able to do it a lot faster than that. And uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm just looking, uh, <laughs> I'm going to crash into something, which I'm not. Uh, yeah, but uh, hey, that's what I'm, <laughs> that's my, that's my sort of personal best at the moment. Yeah, it's Saturday. I'm definitely going to be treating myself to a uh, beer when I stop. And I'll probably wear a stop, unless it's an absolute rubbish mooring, I will probably stop for the two nights that I didn't have back at uh, Stoke Bruin. Well, <laughs> now it's not looking so light, is it? Uh, actually, it's now slightly better in real life than on the video, but uh, unfortunately, the, the banks are absolutely rubbish. Uh, and I just, I've tried, to, I just tried a few minutes ago to pull somewhere, but I couldn't even get the bloody pegs in, so... Uh, A uh, gentleman walking his dog said that there was some better moorings after the bridge, which I've uh, not seen yet, but I've just gone through. So fingers crossed, because I think I've got about 10 more minutes and then I will, really will be uh, boating at night. Which, while there's lots of firsts in this uh, trip, it's not something I really want to be doing. Well, happily the dog walker was correct, and uh, much better bank kind of got the pegs in, so that'll do me for the night. Morning. Well, in past videos, I said that I wasn't going to do any, uh, you know, any videos of me cruising along. However, as you, if you just watch this, you'll know that that's exactly what I've just done. Uh, basically, I've been, as this is my first week, and uh, I've been taking, you know, just for my own amusement, just recording me and my my first locks, my first tunnels, etc. Uh, anyway, I thought, well, why not just why not put it together and uh, I can upload it to YouTube. Some people have previously said that they would be interested in seeing it and if people are not they don't have to watch. Uh, so there you go. That's why there's no proper introduction at the start because this wasn't, uh, you know, these weren't meant to be a, a, a you know, narrowboat MLC proper video. But uh, yeah, so I imagine that there aren't, you know, there aren't that many firsts at the moment. But uh, I, as I said last time, I will, uh, I will sporadically be doing some videos, and uh, you know, when I get the trim underway, <laughs> I'll let you finally, you know, know about that, etc., etc. And if anything does interesting uh, happen on the while I'm very slowly chugging along, I will, uh, I will include that too. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I will uh, see you at the soonest available opportunity and uh, catch you later.